Good morning, everybody. I am so excited to be here with you today. If you are with me live or on the replay, please go ahead and let me know in the comments. And I'm really excited because today kicks off my Tour de Kimonil Coaching. <laughs> And this month is my birthday month, but I'm going to, I want to take time each week this month to share with you a little bit more about all the different services that I have to offer you. And not only am I going to talk about the origin, origins of how I began, all, you know, in that, in each direction, I'm also going to be sharing with you some tips that you can use, or maybe someone you know, to help you in each of those areas. There's also going to be some, some freebies or discounts, and I'm excited. So let me go ahead and pull up uh, a, some notes that I have here for us today. And so good to see you, those that are with us live. Okay, so we're starting off today with where it all began. And of course, there's always a story before the story, right? But I'm not going to get into all that. So. It was in 2013 when I really started to, to become very eager about coaching. And so what I'm gonna share with you today is I'm gonna talk about pre-employment coaching and job interview coaching and how I can support you in that arena. So it all started in 2013 and I was super eager to coach. I was able to identify I really wanted to help people with their confidence. And of course, if you start to Google, you know, how do I help people build their confidence? There's 80 million ways you can do that, right? So I looked at the areas that I had a lot of experience in and what was I really passionate about and I thought, oh my God, goodness, I have this wealth of experience and, and wisdom with interviews, job interviews. And I was continually seeing areas that, just little things that people were missing because then they, were, they weren't getting the job and they weren't understanding what wasn't clicking, what wasn't falling into place. And so I was super excited because this was something I was able to help out with. And in a moment here, I am going to share you interviewing tips that you can use and you can apply immediately. Uh, but I want to share with you that very first story, that very first client that I had. And I bet you can imagine who it may have been if you were a, a coach, an entrepreneur, um, doing anything on your own. Who are typically your first clients? <laughs> Relatives. <laughs> and so if that person is watching today, I hope she'll go ahead and say hello. But when I when I first decided, you know what, I'm going to help people with their job interviewing skills. I happened to have a relative who was in a very typical common place. She had, she had the skills, she had the knowledge, she knew what she knew professionally. But when she was going to the interview, it somehow wasn't translating or she wasn't making that, that positive impact in conveying to them that she's their their best you know best interview candidate and the the one dire and so she had actually been interviewing for a year literally literally a year and finally decided to reach out she knew you know I had already been talking about interview coaching and she reached out and I said okay yes you know let's let's do this let's talk and and so we had a session and like I do with all my clients pretty much all my clients we went over all the different areas of an employment interview and looking at you know what, what was her experience how was she talking about herself how was she presenting herself in the interview room body language the way you dress the word choices you use everything all of it factors in oh and not to mention your energy that absolutely plays a role in how you come across in a job interview. And so we looked at all these different areas and I was able to help her identify the gaps uh, or the, just the, the, the parts that weren't quite clicking for her, right? That week, I think it was maybe a day or two days later, she had another interview and by the end of the week, she got the job. So this was incredibly exciting, of course, for both of us. And it was very foreshadowing of what was to come because that actually was a story a lot of my clients ended up having. They were really great at what they did professionally. They know how to do what they do. And yet they were interviewing one interview after another and not getting that job offer and feeling frustrated by it. And maybe even a little, um, you know, a little, 
starting to lose their confidence, right? Self-esteem starting to lower, somehow thinking something's wrong with you, nothing's wrong with you. And this was the beauty of where I was able to serve and support people. So, so there've been many clients that have come since then with the similar stories. And I'm so grateful every time someone comes back and says, Kim, I got the job. There have even been clients that say, Kim, I got two job, job offers, right? You may have interviews that are back to back and and now you're like, uh-oh, now I have a new dilemma. <laughs> do I do I go with this job or go with that job? And that's a whole other ball game that I love walking people through as well. But that is how it all started. And so before I get into my tips, I want to let you know that if this is resonating with you and where you might be, or maybe someone you know, there are, for my job interview coaching, there are really two different types of sessions that I make available. The, very, the first session, and one that tends to be the most helpful for, for a lot of clients, is what I call my full interview coaching package. And just like I mentioned with you know my very first client, we, we go over all the different areas of an interview. All these little things that you may think, well, that's the thing. You may think that they're little, and they're not. They add up, they make a difference. So I go over all of those things with you. I help you, you know, feel more confident in being able to talk about your strengths and your weaknesses and being able to, you know, stand in your knowledge and wisdom of, of who you are, your expertise, while also remaining humble. Because I know a lot of times that can be an area, you know, we think that if we're talking about ourselves, then we're somehow not being humble anymore. And you don't need to be someone that you're not in a job interview. You really, you don't, you don't. Um, and so that's what I help you do, is I help you to learn how to be yourself but powerfully, confidently, strongly, so that you walk away feeling amazing. And more often than not, you're gonna end up getting either a second interview, the job offer, something of that sort. So we've got the full interview coaching package, which, just a moment, is typically four hours. And I know that sounds really long. It goes by ridiculously fast. And for those clients who aren't able to do that, I do offer the opportunity to split it up into two two-hour sessions. But the reason why it's four hours is because a lot of times when clients, when you all of a sudden get that interview, right? You've been applying and all of a sudden you get an interview and they say, hey, can you come in tomorrow? Can you come in, you know, at the end of this week? You don't have a lot of time left, right? And so by doing a four hour session, we're able to spend time on all those things that you're gonna to need to do in one full setting. We're not only gonna talk about stuff, I'm gonna help you review your resume and how that's gonna factor into the, your interview. And we're also going to do mock interviews. Those are so, so key. Actually getting into that practice of being that con confident interviewer in, in your interview. So. So we go through all of those things. Now, if you don't have time for even that, uh, because I realize that is a chunk of time, so worth it though, then I also offer a one hour last minute interview gear up session, you know, just for some, some, you know, you've got a limited amount of time, so we're gonna quickly go over any tweaks that you might need to make, any you know, confidence builders uh, to really help you be in, in that confident energy space before you go into the interview. And so if you'd like to find out more about that, and I'm gonna post a link down at the bottom, you can go to kimonealcoaching.com, click on the coaching, interview confidence coaching links, and find out more about that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and share with you some of my top tips, and I gotta be honest with you, it was challenging for me to, to figure out which, are, which am I gonna consider my top tips, because I have a ton of tips. <laughs> I have a ton of tips and they're all, they're all important. They're all very useful, but I narrowed it down just for today. And if you'd like more after this, then I'll tell you how you can do that as well. So my top interview tips, number one, first and foremost, and this may sound obvious to some, but not to everyone. And that's why I say it, you must prepare. So when I first started coaching, and not even just when I first started, even today, one of the questions I'll always get back is, well, what do you mean? How do you prepare? And I say, exactly. <laughs> this is why interview coaching was one of the first things I said, oh, you know, there's a need for that. And I can, I can help. I can help in that arena. What do I mean by prepare? Well, there's a lot. Um, but in a nutshell, you want to look at your past experiences and all the knowledge and wisdom that you have gained over your professional career. 
take a look at where you are today. How are you utilizing that information? And, and you know, who, who are you being today? How do you help your current employer or your clients, whoever it may be that you serve? And then where are you headed, right? So whatever you're doing today, how is that serving you in what you're moving towards in the future? What are your goals? You know, when you speak to an employer and, you know, maybe they ask you, where do you see yourself in five years? Or maybe they give you an inclination. They would like for you to grow with the company. Have you thought about that? What can you share with them that would be in alignment with that, with that vision that they're looking for in their, in their candidate and you, right? So first and foremost is prepare. And that's just a nutshell of, of what that encompasses. Number two, I'm actually combining two things here is knowing before you go into the interview, all of these things are before you go into the interview, knowing your strengths and your weaknesses, really making sure that you are clear on what those are. But then you can take another step further. You want to be comfortable in speaking about them in sharing your strengths and weaknesses with other people that you've never met before, right? A lot of times there can be this assumption that the interviewer might be, um, you know, what are they thinking, right? They're, they're judging me or you may have all these different thoughts that are going in your head about what you think that they might be thinking about you. What I help in the coaching is help you to move away from that space because the more confident you can be in whatever you share and specifically in knowing your strengths and your weaknesses, it's, it doesn't, it's not going to matter what's going on in their head. You don't have control over that anyway. So you want to feel confident in knowing what your strengths are, being able to voice those, as well as at least one of your weaknesses. We all have them. We all have them. It's not about pointing fingers. It's about, are you even aware of what your weakness is? And are you able to be able to share that with someone else and be in that dialogue with them, right? Because if they're aware uh, of something that might be a, a weakness for you, you know, they're going to see ways that they can work with you because you're able to identify your weakness. And there's different ways we can go, we can talk about that. Um, so for now, I'm not going to get into all that, but I definitely just want to emphasize knowing your strengths and your weaknesses is very, very key. Always comes up in interviews, regardless of how interviewing processes have changed over the years. Okay, so I really want to emphasize that. Okay, number three. Whew. I, so many people ask about this one. How do you answer? Tell me about yourself, right? Can, do you, have you, have you found yourself in that quandary? Oh my gosh, what do I say? I still will have people ask me, um, do I tell them about my personal life or, you know, do I just talk about work? And I have different, I have multiple answers for this actually. In general, and especially if you're in the U.S., focus on your professional background, experiences, um, knowledge, wisdom. That is really where your focus is. Do not, do not bring in your, your personal life. With that said, I have learned over the years, if you're applying for jobs in other countries, you're per bringing your personal life in actually is a can be a good thing and in some ways may even be required uh, i know for the us that's different <laughs> but so i've learned that and depending on what your background is and what the job is that you're applying for there may be uh in the context of who you are and what you're looking for there actually may be um a reason a good reason for you to include just a little bit about who you are beyond your professional background to include you know maybe a negative that on your resume your cover letter or within an interview and that is something that um, I put out there just to say that it's not black and white you know across the board um, but it's also something that I would say you know do sparingly do with caution and I'm gonna absolutely recommend you know consult, consult a coach, consult someone else about how you would go about doing that. Okay. So that's not going to be the very first and foremost thing that I would recommend to you, but there are instances where it actually can serve and support you. Okay. So, um, and 
tell me about yourself is the one is the one thing that you actually can formulate and rehearse and to a degree memorize the one thing in your interview everything else you are not going to memorize because you're going to want to be in the flow of you and we we prepare and practice and do mock interviews to help you be in that flow regardless of where the interviews interviewers take you in the interview and so with those things you'll be prepared to speak on anything but all those other questions you're not going to have memorized but tell me about yourself is actually one uh, statement or question that you can to some degree memorize so okay my fourth interview coaching tip all of the stuff that we're talking about preparing you're not just doing it up here you absolutely want to actually say it out loud speak it out loud I refer to it as getting your muscle memory going with your tongue, using certain keywords to describe yourself. Because think about it this way, the interviewers have gifted you a limited amount of time to showcase yourself, to talk about who you are, what it is you have to offer, right? And so you wanna make sure that you're maximizing that time, utilizing it to the best of your ability and so by preparing ahead of time, how am I going to talk about these things? How would I answer this potential question or that potential question? You're already gonna know the, the word choices that are gonna best serve you, the phrases that are gonna work for you, what not to say, what to say. And so coaching helps you really get clear on that. I really, there's a, I have a huge emphasis on that because I know how important that is. This is not about using your 30 minute interview coaching window or your 30 minute interview window for speaking a mile a minute and sharing everything about your life and all your professional experience all at the same time. <laughs> That's not what it's about. Um, and when you prepare, you it's easier to step into a space of comfort and acceptance about that because you now know what to share, what not to share. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Um, so let's see here, we've got some new people that have joined us. Hey, so good to see everyone that's popping in. And so moving on to tip number five, <laughs> and I debated including this in here, it's on my, on my interview tips sheet, um, but I see value in this and so I want you to know. Tip number five is to smile. Now what do I mean by that? Don't go away, <laughs> bear with me. If you are not someone who naturally smiles often or regularly, this is not about becoming someone that you're not. This is not about forcing a smile onto your face. This is not about being fake in any way. This is, this is about what a smile adds to any interaction with another human being and what it can do for you in a situation like an interview. So, so three, th I mean, smiles do a lot of things, but three things that really stand out for me within the context of an interview is it conveys likability. So an interview is an opportunity for, of course, the employer to see, gosh, um, you know, is, is this someone we can see working, working here in our organization, working well with, with, you know, working well with me and working well with the other employees in the organization. Smile helps to convey a sense of, ooh, that, possible, right? We could possibly work well together. Two, it conveys a sense of ease, comfort, and confidence. So you may not be the only one who's a little nervous going into the interview. If you're nervous, you don't have to be. Sometimes the interviewers are kind of nervous too. And so a smile helps to ease some of that. It allows you to be seen as, I'm, I'm ready, I'm here, I'm confident, I know who I am, I'm excited for this interview and to, to connect with these people. Not only is it their opportunity to see if they want you, it's your opportunity to see if you like them, if you can see yourself working at that company. They're interviewing you, but you're also gonna have an opportunity to ask them questions. This is a mutual opportunity for both of you to see if you're a fit. And a smile just kind of helps open the pathway for that. Third thing that a smile helps do, helps with is, and I, I guess I kind of already said this, but it gives off the air that you might be, that you might be friendly and nice to work with. So 
it conveys that sense of likability, but also, you know, someone to work with um, that would that would fit into their into their their office, right? So again, this is not about forcing a smile on your face and like plastering a smile on your face, right? For the entire interview. I'm not talking about, hi, yes, and this is how I um, yes. This is what I did at my last job and my strengths are in my, <laughs> that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, you know, if, if you're not used to smiling, then how about, you know, just prepare in advance. You know, I'm going to smile when I at least greet them and shake hands. Hi, nice to meet you too. Maybe smile once when you're at the interview table. Nice. You know, thank you for having me. Yeah. And then you get into the interview questions. Allow yourself to find a sense of nat naturalness with it. And if you're a natural smiler, then just know that that's a great thing and it'll it'll absolutely add to your interview. Okay, my sixth top tip, and again, I have so many more, <laughs> but my sixth top tip is make sure you do not leave that interview without them knowing that you actually want the position. Now, this may sound obvious, but it's not. You may be very aware that several people, literally hundreds of people will apply for the same jobs. And only a small amount of people typically get invited into an interview, right? A lot of people apply for jobs that they don't even want. So don't assume that they assume that you actually want that job because you want to be there. They may think that you just want a job, right? And so you want to make sure that that's not the vibe you're giving off, that you're not giving off a, off a vibe of, um, yeah, I just want any job, you know, please hire me. Yeah, I have all this background and these skills. <laughs> that's not the vibe you want to give off. That's not going to, that's not going to entice them <laughs> to say, Ooh, they'd be great here. <laughs> okay. So, and if you're in that position, you know, totally get it. So this is kind of a predicament that someone who's applying for interviews may find themselves in and go, okay, well, I'm interviewing for this job and sure, it fits with my skills to some degree. Is it my dream job? No, not really, but I do really want this job. So, so as much as possible, get yourself to that place where you can genuinely, genuinely within you desire to have that particular job, not just because it's going to give you a paycheck, but because, but because of, you know, what you were probably going to learn working there, um, how, you know, connect with, how can you serve them? Right. That's some huge piece of this. What can you do for them? Really connect to that and get to that space where you can go, I would really enjoy this job. You know, what would I enjoy about it? That's what I've enjoyed about it. Yeah. And so then, when you hear about the job and they're talking to you and you're saying, ooh, there, there's a fit, right? What they're looking for, what I have to offer, make sure at the very end of the interview, you know, as you're shaking hands, as they're asking you if you have any other questions, as you're saying goodbye, fit in there somewhere. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I really enjoyed uh, learning more about the position and I hope I've answered all your questions. And I just want to make sure you know that I would absolutely love this position. I think it's a great fit. And if you have any other questions for me, I'd love to, um, I'd be more than happy to answer more questions. Just make sure somewhere towards the end of the interview, you infuse in there literally saying the words, I would like, I, you know, I would love to to work for your company. I would love to, uh, you know, have this position and, and be an, you know, show you how I can be an asset to your company. Something along those lines, make sure you express to them that you actually have a desire to be there with their company, you know, um, growing with them in that role, whatever it may be that really pops out for you, make sure that in some way you actually state that at the very end. Because I'm telling you from, from experience of being on the other end of the table, it does make a difference. They want to know that who they're offering the job, who they could potentially offer the job to, would actually want it. And they're going to get a sense of how sincere you are when you actually tell them that you would want it. So oh, I hope that was helpful. And oh, thank you. I, okay, the comment. Oh my gosh, there's so many more comments here than I, than I saw first. 
Okay, awesome. I'm seeing, <laughs> hopefully they're smiling also. Absolutely, Paula, yes. And thank you for the birthday wishes. I appreciate that. Um, and, it, you know, and Paula, you bring up a really good point too, actually, is that you may not necessarily be able to read the interviewer's energy. So they may be transparent. They may be, um, you know, they may be relaxed. They may be natural. They may be open to, okay, you know, yeah, I'm going to meet this person. Let's see if they're a fit. Or they may be the complete opposite. And maybe they are intentionally not being friendly, not smiling. Maybe it's because they want to test you and see how you come across. Or maybe that's just not natural for them. Maybe they don't even want to be there interviewing you, right? Some people actually kind of get roped into doing that for companies and they, it wasn't their choice. <laughs> so these are all the little things that um, I love sharing with my interview coaching clients uh, that you may not, you know, you may not have factored in or, or have been aware of because it, even if they're not smiling, let me say, it's a dance. You want to be in the flow of things, but you don't want, if they've got maybe a very stiff presentation of, of who they are and how they're presenting themselves, do your best to not let that take you completely off track and derail you from, oh, Kim said to smile, but they're not smiling at me. So now I'm not going to smile at all. No, I still absolutely encourage you to at least, you know, bring in a smile or two to stand in your confident power about what it is that you have to offer, accepting them where they are, regardless of how they're choosing to show up for whatever reason, because your job in that interview is to be your best, most confident self and share what it is you have, you have to share with them that, that they're going to need to know about you and making sure that you're continuing to convey that through your energy as well. Okay. So I hope that was helpful. And I, let's see, I'm just going to check the comments again really quick here. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you thought it was good advice. And I have so, so much more still. <laughs> so, so if you would like more of these tips, then I am offering to you my free interview tips. What did I, I don't even know what I've titled it anymore. I created it a long time ago. Anyway, my, my free interview tips, PDF that has at least 17. I think I um, have added some more tips on there. So it's got at least 10 more tips that I did not even share with you here today. And if you would like that, it is a PDF that all you need to do is simply message me your email address, and I will be happy to email you that PDF. And if you would like to you know, maybe you're in a position where you are looking for a new position, or maybe you know someone that is, then I invite you to go to kimonealcoaching.com Again, click on the interview confidence coaching tab at the top and scroll down. You'll see the two different options that I have for coaching. You can schedule a consultation for the full interview coaching package. Uh, you can schedule a last minute interview gear up session, which does not require a consultation. And you can also read some articles and some blog articles and, and things that have published in different places um, that where I talk more about interview tips as well on that page on my website. So. I think that's everything that I have for you here today. It is. So this is how I began with my coaching back in 2013. And by the end of October, because I'm going to be doing this once a week, every week this month in October 2019. And by the end of this month, you are going to, <laughs> you're going to know how I went from interview coaching, helping people with their interview skills to helping people move through their own healing journey. Because what I've learned is a lot of people have the same, not everyone's the same, but a lot of times what comes up in the interview coaching sessions is somewhere this lack of confidence that is rooted in something that's deeper. And so I'm not going to get into that too much right now, but, um, so that's what I love about where my journey has taken me and how I'm able to serve clients today. And so if you'd like to find out more about that, of course, you can just go to kimonealcoaching.com and learn more on there. But I will also, again, be sharing with you every week this month um, a little bit more about each of the services. So 
I'm going to leave you with that. And I thank you for being here. Again, if you're watching the replay, go ahead and let me know on the replay. And if you have any questions at all, just let me know in the comments. I look forward to connecting with you and I'm happy that you're here. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you uh, next week. Okay. Bye.